Right now with Meredith Whitney, she laid it all out in an op-ed in today's Wall Street Journal. She joins me now exclusively to explain. Meredith, always nice to have you on the program. Welcome back. Thanks so much, Maria. So I was just reading your op-ed, and you, you write that a small business credit crunch and high unemployment have been issues and will likely continue to be issues. Categories for us um, how this plays out in your view. Okay, well, the biggest concern of my, one of my biggest concerns over the last few years is you have a lot of regulatory change being crammed into the system just at the time when you need more liquidity. So, for example, um, you know, banks obviously price for risk. Um, they've been told by the CARD Act that they can't effectively price for risk anymore, and you've already seen $1.5 trillion of credit lines, unused credit lines, cut from the system. Um, the proposed amendments, and I think there are something like 100 amendments that are now trying to be tacked on to the financial reg reform. Um, the proposed amendments are going to make it even di more difficult to price for risk. Um, and, you know, Small businesses fund themselves the same way consumers do, through credit card lines, through home equity lines. An alternative source of funding would be smaller community banks, but some of these regulatory proposals are going to make it so difficult for everyone involved that you'll see, I think, at least another $1.3 trillion sucked out of the system. And you write that massive job cuts on a state level of between 1 and 2 million over the next 12 months could also be part of this. Yeah, so that's that's our estimate. Um, you look at how grossly underfunded uh, state and local budgets are at two and a half x what they were after the dot com crash, and there's no way to resolve this because 49 cent states are constitutionally required to balance their budgets. They and you've already heard this. They're cutting jobs. They're going to prospectively cut. I think at a minimum one to two million jobs. So what this means is then the private sector has got to at least replace those job losses to make any kind of difference in terms of overall unemployment. Now, then you dive into what does the private sector look like? Half of the private sector is comprised of small businesses who can't fund themselves and are going to have an increasingly difficult time funding themselves. The other half of the private sector really you know, cut far fewer jobs at, you know, uh, at, during the same credit crisis um, as the small businesses did. By comparison, the large private sector jobs cut Three million jobs. The small business uh, uh, jobs. Small businesses cut five million jobs. So it would really take the large sector rehiring every single person they laid off. Now they may hire, you know, the if they've got, you know, if they went from ten employees down to five, they might may hire that sixth employee. But they're surely not going to hire the tenth employee. So unless we re-engage small businesses, get them lending, um, get get them funding uh, uh, facilities, um, we're going to have a really dangerous and I think, you know chronically high unemployment situation on our hands for a very long time. And this is exactly what politicians should be focused on, not you know, jamming down last minute regulation just to appear to be tough on banks. I think right. that's going to be really unfortunate with really uh, you know, uh, bad unintended consequences. Well, I really want to hear your solutions to this. And, and, and I guess my question would be, why don't we uh, see the people who are actually writing the legislation understanding the, the, the industry a little better? I mean, what can be done to get the education level on really how markets work up? I was really astounded that the SEC knew that we didn't have individual stock circuit breakers away from the New York Stock Exchange at the other ECNs, but, you know, hadn't done anything about it, didn't, didn't envision what actually could happen. But before we go into that, because I also want to get your, your uh, thoughts on the credit card data that was out for the month of April uh, today, what's your sense of the European banking situation? I mean, the European banks, as we've spoken in the past, are seeing capital crisis. Crunches. They're they're needing to raise capital. You know, I expected this because Basel uh, three is coming down the pike. But would you put any new money to work in any of the European banks given this sell-off or no? N not in a million years. No, the European banks are underfunded, still carry assets on their balance sheets that are worse marked than even the U.S. banks. Now that's I mean that, that's that's uh, uh, that's tough to say. But the Europeans are so European banks are so much worse off than uh, the U.S. banks. Now it's relative. There are two bad categories of uh, institutions you're looking at. Um, but you know you've got hundreds of billions of dollars worth of recaps that need to take place in Europe. Um, and uh, I think you know for certain. Banks, you, you're much better served in the U.S. I'm not. I'm not thrilled about the U.S. banks right now, um, particularly because what you're seeing now is, you know, with news like Lowe's, you know, the, the normalized earnings picture is a lot lower than people uh, priced into this market. So, so what do you want to do then if you're invested in some of the uh, U.S. banks? Do you think that uh, they go much lower from current levels? 
I think that the uh, the large banks look. There's so much potentially game-changing um, bad regulatory reform on deck that will be determined likely this week at the latest next week, um, and that's going to affect so many major portions of the bank's earnings that I would avoid financials at all costs, um, uh, in the, particularly in the banking sector right now, because we just don't know. And DC has um, uh, DC and politicians have you know proven far worse than our worst expectations. So I would love for them to you know be responsible, be thoughtful about. What's going through? But if any, you know, uh, the past week has determined anything can happen, and I think it's going to be bad. It could be very bad for banks. I hope it's not. So, what what is the most on uh, onerous uh, points in the regulatory reform that that unnerves you? What would you like to see change specifically? Okay, there are two main things. One is uh, this issue of preemption, whereby banks now can be domiciled in one state and apply those interest rates to all states. What they're proposing now are interest rate caps on individual state levels. Now, if an interest rate, let's say, uh, in one state is dramatically less than an interest rate in another state, what do you think the banks are going to do? Of course, they're going to just not lend to that state. So it's going to make um, accessing capital so difficult um, for pockets of the country. I think that's extremely dangerous. Um, you know, aside from the overall expense burden that it creates for the banks, and uh, remember, the small community banks cannot afford all of this additional expense burden. Then the other issue is um, this issue of interchange uh, uh, legislation. This is specifically the Durbin bill. So this has been an issue where the Fed then will come and regulate the interchange, the rates at which you get charged, a merchant gets charged for using a credit card machine. Now, we've already seen this play out in Australia with the guise of you're protecting the consumer. It's done no such thing. It's done no um, cost lowering for the consumer. Um, the small businesses have just, small businesses that that have benefited from this interchange have just pocketed the money and it hasn't gone back to the to, uh, to the consumer whatsoever. But here's the issue. So there's a cap on this. Um, uh, uh, community banks below 10 billion dollars uh, will be exempt from this uh, from this legislation. But here's the issue. The large banks control the dominant market share of the debit and credit card market. So they'll, by, by law, be f uh, forced to um, carry a lower interchange fee for merchants. The community banks that are also offering debit cards, et cetera, are going to be priced out of the market. They're going to be rendered non-competitive. And I think this is going to force a lot of the uh, smaller community banks actually out of the market entirely. And that's really dangerous, getting back to providing liquidity for small businesses and, and smaller communities. Yeah, not to mention we could have a commercial real estate problem second half of the year. And we all know that the smaller and the regional banks are going to get hit because of the exposure relative to the larger banks. Any thought, Meredith, on the info today that we got the credit card data for April? It, it came in for the big banks and apparently it looks like delinquencies are improving. Yeah, okay, so, so what the credit card companies have had to do, and this is in reaction to the CARD Act, which made it very difficult to price on the go for uh, unsecured le lending, which is a credit card loan. Um, they have pulled back, and as I said, over $1.5 trillion of existing credit card lines or, or existing unused credit card lines, um, and they've gravitated towards the better custom, uh, customers. So the better customers are, of course, paying down much faster. So there's a big portion of the uh, of the uh, economy that is doing very well and has all the money. I'm worried about the rest of the economy. So um, the high end now is, of course, paying down bills and is going to be reflected in lower delinquencies. Uh, a lot of the folks that have been jammed out of the market have, with reduced lines of credit or no lines of credit are no longer factoring into those numbers. So from, a, from an investment standpoint, final question here, what kind of a second half of you are you expecting from the stock market? I think it's going to be bleak. I think that you have really no end demand from the consumer. Um, now, again, there's some high-end consumers that are doing well, but the bulk of consumers, I think, are going to be increasingly losing their jobs with limited access to credit. I think you're going to see the double dip in housing take place in the second half, and it's going to be rocky sledding. All right, Meredith, we will leave it there. Great to have you on the program. Thanks very much for joining Thanks, us. Man. We uh, enjoyed that op-ed today. Meredith Whitney joining us live today in Utah. We'll take a short break. We've got a market that is down about